everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio with my very first Gina B. Aaron's Design Team video for the month of January 2019. And the theme for this month is Journal It. Now, I am not a regular mixed media journaler. I've said that many, many times. I don't know who I'm trying to convince. <laughs> Maybe myself or other people. Either way, doesn't matter. Um, so this is my third time to try to film this video. The point was that I am trying to fill up a um, junk journal that has nothing but painty paper in it and I'm missing one signature so I thought well let me try Gina's new stamps and I'm gonna show them to you and they're in a disarray and they're dirty because I've been busy. So let's see where's the oh here it is. This is the one that I had my very first one from the Modern Atomic Collection. Um, I really like this one especially because of this and this. Yesterday I tried filming this with this one right here, which after you do this one, then you put this one on and stamp it on top of these. And then these are the color base, and then you stamp those on top of those if you want to. And then she has them divided up like this. Okay? So this one is, this one is, you know, I don't know which way it goes. This one is this one. Something like that. All right? And then I have, uh oh this really dirty one. <laughs> this one goes right there. And this one, which is also really dirty, is this one right here. And they are rather large. So I'm very pleased at the size. I'm not all about fiddly little stamps. I've not used these little dinky ones. I'm more into the larger size ones. All right, so yesterday, while I was trying to film, I did uh, book pages and jelly printed them. Some you can see where I did the stamping of the larger squarish ones. Not on that one. Ah, but look at this one. This one is this. These were all done with deco art paint and de uh, acrylic paint and um, fluid acrylics and traditions paint. Here's another one. Now this one was done as a roll off for another page and I did the paint on here and then took the rubber stamps and after I had stamped them somewhere else, stamped them on here, then took this and placed it on here and mashed it on the paper. I have seen that on a, a Jelly Arts uh, video, so I thought I would give it a shot. So that's those. They were done at different times with different color tones because of already stamping and redoing them. All right, I already showed you this side. And here's the other one. Here's this one with the these. Cool, huh? It now this was a roll-off paper. I'd already put red on another paper and this was just the roll-off paper and then I stamped the stamps on it. On the jelly plate. Here's another one where I did this and used it as the stamp pad like that. And I did it, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, either six or seven times on here. Different colors, different depths of um, mashing down on the stamp. There's those two. There's this one. This one was done in red on the jelly plate. Then I went back and spread out more paint with no paint on the jelly plate and then stamped with this one onto the jelly plate and used the jelly plate as the place where I could put my ink and then just stamped it on there. There's that. That was done on the jelly plate, wet, and then I used this just to, as you can see, the color's still on there. And again, the same procedure. This was just done as a roll on the jelly plate. This is a roll-off piece. Then I took this stamp and stamped it on there to get the paint off. Was that one. This one was done, and I don't think this one turned out the way I thought it was going to, but I like the shadow effect in it. This was done with this one right here. Can you see it? See the little white part sticking down? That's uh, this one, I think, right there. 
with that part sticking down. This one was just Harry Carry. I mean, it was like stamp roll, stamp roll, stamp roll. It has like several layers on it. This is a roll off sheet. Never mind. Oh, here's a good one. <laughs> here's this one right here where I did it like this with this one. And as you can see, the colors match because it is still dirty from last night's playing. All right, so what this was about is trying to fill in the last signature of a journal. So I'm going to show you how I cut these up and how I sew them into my journal, my, my little paint journal. And that will be journal it for the month of January. All right, so I'm going to stop now and restart start cutting these up, measure the size that I need for the little book. Let me show you the little book. Where is the little book? Well, I'm going to have to... Oh, here it is. Here's the book. No, these are not Gina's stamps. <laughs> so here is the little um, stamp paper journal I'm working on. And I already have one, two, three signatures. But... Oh, actually, I had four and combined them into two because they weren't fat enough. And then I only have a couple sheets left for the third. So I'm trying to get ten sheets of, um, you know, ten, ten pieces of double-sided painted paper in there. And I did have three or four signatures, and I decided that they weren't skinny enough. I consulted with another person who makes journals, and she said it looked a little too thin, and I agreed. So, you know, when you put them in here and there's gaps in between the, the signatures, you really need to, to, you know, put, let's do it this way. See, it needs a third signature. These two fat ones are not fat enough, so I need a third, maybe even a fourth. After I cut these papers up here, I will be able to tell, I will be able to judge, and I'll show sewing them in and how I do it all. So it'll all be fast forwarded because it'll just take too long. Okay, I will see you guys on the other side. Okay, so I wanted to make sure that the creep from piling 10 sheets of paper one inside the other, which is a natural thing, you get creep. Um, I want to make sure that the paper doesn't stick outside the boundaries of the top and the, or the side and the top and the bottom of the book. I have one that I have a little concern over that I may have to trim. It's this one right here. So let me clip it together and give it a little haircut. Let me mash down here. Make sure it's flat. And give it a bit of a cut because I think it's hanging out just a little too much. No, the pages aren't completely even, but they weren't meant to be. But I think they need to be a little more even than what they are. All right, so let me interject something right here so you understand the method behind the madness. I did this jelly uh, printing on a 5x7 plate. The, the book that I used is larger. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to cut off the white edges on it because I really don't want that in the book. I want to do the white. I want to trim a little more off of this side. So I'm not crazy about the white on there. Okay, so there's that one. Alrighty, so this explains why I'm doing what I'm doing. And also, something that I should remember from, I don't know where I learned this, but if I'm going to cut stuff like this for a book, 
I need to make sure I cut it all in the same day so that my measurement does not have to be questioned if I step away on the same day. I can come back and pick up right where I left off. Most Okay, I finished cutting the creep, finished cutting everything, and I've put my signatures in here. And I know this one is a little hard to see because it's dark. But if you look this way, when you open the book, it doesn't look so spread out. And then doesn't that look much better? There's not as much space in between these. And they'll be spaced out a little more evenly. So there are 20, 40, 60, 80 pages of paper in this. It's a small little book. But that's the way I like it. Okay, so I got the needle threaded. I got all the holes poked into the... So you can see them, they're all lined up. Now I'm gonna start sewing them.
Okay, so the little book's done. You saw that it didn't take much effort to sew it in. If you pre-poke the holes and make the measurements in the beginning, do the hard work in the front, then doing the last part is simply e is very easy. So they're pretty well spaced. Can you see them? Wait, there you go. And that's all because I took the time to be aggravated by measuring. <laughs> all right, so the second signature in, or whichever way you turn the book, let's do it this way, has Gina's stamps in here from the Atomic Age. There they are right there. They make great impressions on the jelly plate for printing. It doesn't have to just to be about stamping with ink. It can be about using them on the jelly plate. I really am very pleased at how, how well they took the paint and how well it stuck and then how well it came off. I just love the way they look. So there's my book with Gina, Gina B. Aaron's Atomic Age stamp set. I think this one. I, okay, so as I said before, the little book's done. Everything is spaced out properly. All the prints in here, or the majority of the prints, have Gina's Atomic Modern Atomic Collection set number one. Basically, this stamp and this stamp in there, and then it has this in there. I used this, this, and this. I didn't use these yet. That'll be for another video. Anyway, so that's what I've got going on right now. What's it called? Oh, Don't Be a Square Light. And this one says Don't Be a Square. And then these are called Atomic Moon Solid, Atomic Moon's Light. L-I-T-E. So there it is. All done. My little bitty painted paper journal. I called it a junk journal in the beginning, but I don't really think it's a junk journal. It's mostly a painty paper journal. So you got paints on both sides of the paper and it turned out really well. I, I'm, I, sometimes I shock myself, you know? And that's a good thing because it's always nice to be surprised when something turns out better than you think it will. All right, so this is Vicki Brown with Messy Table Studio for Gina B. Aaron's design team for the month of January 2019 with the theme of Journal It. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you next month.